Come to Dickie's Barbecue when you're ready to talk about catering, whether it's a family reunion, a company picnic, or any type party. From little bitty parties to great big shindigs, our catering experts arrange everything, so you worry about nothing. We offer full-service catering, delivery buffets, even box lunches, with meat that's hand-rubbed, slow-smoked over real hickory wood in all of our stores every night. We may do your catering, but you're always our guest at Dickie's. If you love barbecue, come to Dickie's. We're a place that speaks your language. Dickies, we speak barbecue. Blog Talk Radio. We are the UR Tennis Network. Our mission is to be the voice of tennis. We enlist a team of passionate enthusiasts to promote our sport. We strive to bring interesting perspectives on the many spins of tennis. Our goal is to provide the learners of our sport with current news and information from many angles. We seek active participation from communities interested in tennis, but tennis is not interested in them. We are expanding our outreach. Tennis is a true lifetime sport that needs to be talked about, and the UR Tennis Network pledges to pursue this idea relentlessly. Good morning and welcome to the Parenting Aces radio show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, coming at you from Marietta, Georgia. And it is actually, I see kind of, sort of, some sunshine out the window today, which is a very nice change of pace from the weather we've been having for about the last week or so. It has been raining nonstop. And for those of you who have been in the Atlanta area for tournaments with your children, uh, on on the on behalf of everybody in the area, I apologize for our crummy, crummy weather. My own matches have gotten rained out, too. It's just been awful. So hopefully we're looking at some clear weather for the next few days and everybody can get back out on the courts. But uh, today we are going to be talking with John Eagleton and Jean Mayer, and these guys have, between them, so much tennis clout, it's it's hard to even describe to y'all. Um, they both have grown up playing the sport and excelling at the sport, both at the junior level and on the professional level, and are now involved in coaching and coaches' training, and they just have so much to offer, and I'm really, really excited to hear their thoughts on what they're doing with their new company and how they're hoping to change the face of tennis in the U.S. So I'm going to bring them on the line shortly. Before I do, I want to just encourage you guys, if you haven't already, to please go to ParentingAces.com and read my latest article about college tennis and the latest teams to have been cut in college tennis And it's just heartbreaking every time we hear of another program getting cut. The ones, the latest ones that got cut, UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, uh, hit especially close to home because I consider the coach there, Rob Hubbard, a a good friend. And my heart is just breaking for him, for his assistant coach, for his volunteer assistance for the kids that play and Rob coaches both the men's and the women's team there. And they have just been told that the 2015, 2016 season will be the last. So please read the article, take to heart the suggestions made in the piece and whatever else you do, please, please, please go out and support your local college teams this year. They need us there. They need our our bodies in the stands. They need us supporting them in their community efforts. And so I am imploring you to please, please, please look into your local teams, make a connection with them, get to know the coach, get to know the players, and take your kids out and watch these young men and women do what they do best. All right, off my soapbox, let me go to a quick break, and when we come back, I am looking very forward to chatting with John Eagleton and Jean Mayer. Warning, orthopedic surgeons are seeing an increase in overuse injuries when young athletes perform the same repetitive, repetitive, stressful motions over and over. over. Pitching, tennis, weight training, even long swimming workouts can cause overuse trauma that may require surgery. If your kids play and train hard... Visit orthoinfo.org or stopsportsinjuries.org. 
A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons and the American Orthopedic Society for Sports Medicine. Welcome back to the Parenting Aces radio show on Blog Talk Radio's UR Tennis Network. I'm your host, Lisa Stone, and just want to give you guys the call-in number in case you'd like to call and chat with today's guests. That number is 714-583-6853. Again, 714-583-6853. We'd love to hear from you. So uh, let me bring today's guests on the air. We've got John Eagleton and Jean Mayer. And gentlemen, thank you so, so much for joining us. Uh, it's a pleasure, Nice Lisa. to be with you. So I, I know you guys both have accomplished so much in your own playing uh, of the sport, both at the junior level and at the professional level. And now you're both involved in coaching and coaches' education. We had Tim Mayotte on the show last week, and Tim talked to, to us, and Scott Schultz joined him for a short while to talk about the new USTA Coaching University. And I would love to hear what you guys are doing and how you think that's going to contribute to the development of junior tennis in our country. Well, Gene, you... maybe I'll kick it off. Um, this is Gene. Um I think what you know what we're really all about is uh trying to make uh it easier for people to learn what is a very complicated game. Um I think when people watch uh tennis on TV and particularly if you don't watch it in slow motion and analyze videos there's a lot that goes on uh to the movement uh, to the stroke production side of playing the game and getting those fundamentals early is a huge part of becoming a, the best tennis player that you can be. I, I know my, my dad was my coach, and I started playing at two years old, so I think my fundamentals were down, he said, by about seven or eight. My game didn't change very much. So that was a huge benefit of having a very knowledgeable coach as a, as a dad. But part of what we're doing with Techni Tennis is revolutionary, not in that John Eagleton had some vision one night and came up with a new system of, uh, of tennis, but more that John has taken the time to pour over extensively videos of current players what they do, what actually happens, and to simplify the learning process, both for coaches to be able to have in sequence the necessary elements for stroke production and even for movement, but also for students to be able to see and understand and grasp these concepts more quickly and earlier on in their tennis careers. We hear a lot of times about kids and and my own child was a victim of this as well, getting less than stellar technical instruction early on and then having to unlearn and relearn and how difficult that is. Can you all talk about how parents can evaluate the coaching that their children are getting to know whether or not they are indeed getting the best technical instruction out there? Well, Lisa, you know, um, I guess I was on the show a couple of years ago, and, and everything that I've been working towards is to try to create a new foundation for the starting point. The game has changed from linear power to rotational power, and the U.S. is an awfully big country, and everybody's had their own systems, but now we need more of a base foundation program that operates in rotational power and that teaches pros how to teach it, and so, you know, you need to know if you're a parent, if you're not working in rotational power, uh, you know, there's a little bit of linear power still in tennis, then your kid is never going to achieve where they need to go in terms of reaching their maximum potential. You know, so technique tennis is about teaching you how the pros play. You need to play the way they play. And for some reason over the last 10, 15 years, there's been a disconnect of how people play tennis, not just in America, South Africa, Australia, different countries, and they've had less impact on the pro tour producing players. But it all starts, you know, with 
the, uh, some level of a teaching system. We're hoping that Technic Tennis will lay the foundation for people having basically the wheels and the body to be able to create players that play like the pros. And then, um, you know, our job is just simply to get information. Technic Tennis has an app that's live, Technic Tennis. Dot com and then simply getting information to pros. We believe that pros, uh, this is a country of tremendous amount of pros, very talented pros. If we give them the right information, tennis will blossom again in America. And so, and, and, and Le- yes, go and ahead. Lisa, to your, to your question there, I, I mean, I feel for the struggle that parents have in assessing this situation. Um, what I find, I'm based in, in the New York City area, uh, out on Long Island, and what I find often is that uh, uh, young players and their parents are often drawn to a particular program because there are other really good players there. That tends to often be the number one drawing card to draw juniors into a particular uh, teaching program, where tennis is so demanding. I think my my estimation is that golf and tennis are probably the most technically demanding uh, sports, and that if you are hugely limited in your technique, you really will struggle that with that, and you can't just compensate um, with athleticism. So what happens so often is that that people wind up becoming parts of programs where there are good players that they don't necessarily play with, but they're not really looking at the importance of the fundamentals in hitting balls. They look through that, and they often get very active in playing points and king-of-the-court kind of drills early on, which can have some place in a program later on. But the, the essence of learning stroke production is between a coach and a player, and it can be often technical. It's not necessarily always the most stimulating part of the game uh, because there has to be repetition in order to develop consistency and pinpoint accuracy. But a huge part of that is, first of all, looking to a place that actually stresses technicals and fundamentals. Now it's a question of finding someone who really understands the game and is not just maybe a good player or or a nice coach, but someone who is also a student of the game, someone who has personal experience but is willing to, I call it almost get your hands dirty in that fundamental side of a building, which can be tedious at times, as opposed to going to the more fun, well, play points and, and have fun and run around, which kids gravitate towards, and if it's done prematurely, can almost... Uh, you know, really impede the kind of technical progress that's needed. I'm glad you brought up the F word, Gene, fun, um, because I've written a lot about that and the challenge of keeping the sport fun while at the same time ensuring that kids are getting proper instruction, as, as you mentioned. And so... Again, for a parent who is just jumping on this crazy (laughs) journey of junior tennis and who may not have the background or knowledge to, you know, walk into an academy or or a club and and be able to tell the quality of instruction that's happening. Is there any concrete question or... Um, you know, red flag or anything that that you can think of that a parent could say, oh, yes, this is where I I can assure my child will get the best instruction possible or, oh, my gosh, I need to turn around and run out of here as quick as possible. Well, you know, I can answer that to you. Yes, let John. Yeah, go ahead, John. There's some very, there's some very simple principles, you know, that you have to understand if you you know you have to have where does it all start? If you don't have a base that looks like Nadal or Djokovic, right there you're just not starting right. You need to in some ways have the same starting point as you got Nadal, Federer, and then Serena. Of course, has a great base, so there's a starting point there. The next starting point is if you don't commit to the open stance or the outside leg, uh, you know, 
and, and they're not teaching that, and they're teaching turn sideways, take the racket back, and that's a tough way to make a living. We made a living, you know, back in the 70s or 80s doing that. But there are some key fundamentals today that you just can't overlook. And then the fact that, you know, you're going to rotate at contact and you're in rotational power and that you have a, in the world of racket head speed, if you're not learning racket head speed and you're not in a, in a, a movement system, which in technique tennis we call duplication of movement, you need to be in the right movement system, which is the fastest, most efficient way to the ball. So basically to make it simple for the parents, hey, if you, they're not operating out of a base, they don't have a movement system similar to the pros. If they don't have techniques that even look vaguely like that, you just if you start wrong today, it's going to be very difficult to recover. Yeah? And, For and sure. Lisa, I think I think one of the benefits of uh, something like techni tennis, because in in my experience, and I've been an avid student of video for quite some time. A friend of mine, John Yandell, has tennisplayer.net, which is a very interesting site in terms because they have so much video footage of current players playing. And it's been very interesting for me to watch from every angle, every player hit their forehand, backhand. And, and I think that is a wonderful tool, being able to see that. But what Techni Tennis does is it doesn't give you tips on improving your shot, which is often where videos uh, go. It really deals with all of these fundamentals. So there is somewhat of a distillation of the game to benchmarks. And so a parent would be able to say, okay, these are some of the basic elements of what's going on. And there will always be variation. If you were to take a lesson even from one pro to the next with a, uh, w a using the system, there would be variation in terms of presentation and what that pro brings to the table and, and the way that they maybe articulate some of these things. But it's very helpful because I, I really feel for parents, parents want the best for their kids. And Unfortunately, uh, in the tennis world, there's a lot of marketing that goes on and saying, well, we'll guarantee that they get to be this good, which is very hard to do. Um, but, but often parents want to hear that, and, and there's a marketing side to it. But there are also very, very many well-meaning pros who just haven't had the kinds of backgrounds, let's say, that someone like a John has had, you know, both – uh, you know, playing, teaching, coaching, studying video, and, and, and lives. John and I know each other for longer than we probably want to admit going back to our Orange Bowl days. It, it's a lot of time, and just and you have also said you're a student of the game, Lisa. You, you know, you're learning even, even though, you know, your, your child is now in college. There's a learning element. So, so a lot of the work there that needs to be done, you can look and say, these are some of the elements. There will be variation what a lesson looks like, but these are some important elements that are essential. And if, if you go a different route and now you're years into it, unlearning is much harder than learning and you really can limit your progress, and, and the student can get so frustrated. For sure. John, can we back up a little bit and have you kind of give us a, a little history of Techni Tennis and the amount of research that you've done and, and kind of, you know, when the light bulb came on for you, what was that moment that made you realize we need to change how we're doing things? Well, you know, America has always been the greatest country in, in most sports, and I think at some time, point in time, uh, 50, 60 of the top 100 players came out of America, men's side, women's side. It was just a serious amount of top players. But one day as I walked around through tournaments, academies, I started realizing there's a major disconnect between how people hit the ball and the pros are playing. I then went to... Uh, the Sony Ericsson, and after four days, I realized that they were in a different movement system. The techniques have changed. I'm going to have to make some serious adjustment. At that time, I wrote a book, Time to Change. I think that's when I got on the radio show. I think I drove 26,000 miles and um, got endorsement from different schools, you know, Georgia Tech, uh, Naval Academy, Citadel, 
But then I realized as I was coming back after a 90-day road trip, that's not really what people wanted to to know is that there's a discount. What they wanted to know is how do you actually teach this? Uh, you know, and then God just kind of gave me a gift where I sold the licensing right to, uh, um, I work for a Christian school here, Inspiration Academy. Inspiration Academy is in, in Bradenton. We're near IMG. But they have a movie production company, and so when I sold the rights to them, they agreed to produce a base teaching system of what I think how the pros play today. And we've been in that process for a very, very long time. Uh, the videos was produced. It's a million dollars worth of videos with, in movie quality, but it was produced with the idea like it's a lesson, so a beginner can watch it. Uh, a parent can watch it, and they will get an idea of the basic fundamentals of what you need to function on the forehand today and the backhand and the volley. I mean, the, it's been a very long road. I would say scripting on this probably took 11 months as I had to go back and forth and script it in three different levels. Uh, basically, at this point, if you know, if we shot, if we have 40 hours of videos on, we've probably made 30 movies. That is a massive undertaking because it's shot with five <laughs> cameras. You know, wow. but I mean, it's come a long way because we have three really good products now. We have the product where I mean, obviously, parents can buy the subscription online. We now have produced a simpler version that we can take to high school coaches, which I think is going to be very beneficial because they need help. I think that's where tennis can really grow, in, and I think being on a high school team is a fun thing. You use the word fun, but you know, Gene, I want to put you on and 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 uh, because. I met you at the U.S. Open three years ago, so how would you describe the process? I'm going to ask you a question because Gene was my worst critic. You know, So Gene is a two-time <laughs> Grand Slam winner, number four in the world in singles, uh, number one in the world in doubles, and Gene graduated from Stanford in three years. So I like to give him a little hard time. So he's, you know, I went to Miami, but he's a smart boy, and, and he kind of worked me over. So Gene, why don't you take me back to that U.S. Open meeting around the time when I met Lisa, you know? Right. Well, well, I think I think that in some ways, uh, you know, a, a little bit more of a perspective from the outside. John had all these things percolating in his mind. He's off, he's got a very fertile mind, and he and he also is a very analytical thinker. So a lot of these things were there, and he was trying to figure out how to do it. So when we met at the Open, we hadn't, you know, spoken that much of late, and we'd known each other for all this time. So we spent a lot of time talking about what he's trying to do. And I was thinking, on one hand, sounds amazing. On the other hand, this guy may be crazy. Because to actually do this, the amount of time and effort to put this all together and actually create a system that sequences learning the entire game, stroke by stroke, sequentially, shooting the videos is an extraordinary amount of time and cost. And so... I was I was concerned that it, is John going to be able to pull this off? Well, as as he mentioned, he's been able to now with a company behind him with the video production capabilities, and we've likened John almost to sort of what I'd call the beautiful mind. His office is blackboards with arrows, and he, because <laughs> his mind works this way, he's able to script not just what needs to be done, but the sequence of learning and the sequence of teaching and the various different elements, and because of his playing background and his coaching background, all of that. So mine, my concern was uh, I, I've, I've always respected John, but I wanted to make sure that what he was talking about, some of the terminology was a may, maybe a little different, some of the way it was put together. So what I did, I poured over, and, and I was maybe his most difficult sell, not from the point of view, I don't agree, but I want to really know about this. So I poured over videos and compared, you know, looking at and all those things. And after after seeing that, I realized the extraordinary amount of time had really paid off in terms of producing something that was accurately taking what the pros do, not just using that as a as sort of a, a hang tag but really, really doing it, breaking it down, and the tediousness of actually doing this and putting it together. If any pro who has been in the game for a long time were actually to think about what this would be, they, they, might, they might say, great idea, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to kill myself doing it. Well, John has invested all that time and effort, and now 
others really reap the benefit in terms of uh, easy to understand, very high quality video, and and the kinds of benchmarks that parents. Uh, players aspiring to be good, good players wanting to be better, um, professional players at, at, different, uh, at different levels, all of the fundamentals laid out there combined with the movement patterns is, we, we hope, will inspire and make easier for people to, to access the great game of tennis. Let me just play devil's advocate for a second. The Internet has spawned innumerable tennis professionals, teaching professionals, right? I mean, there's so many, quote, unquote, you know, tennis pros out there who have YouTube channels, who have websites, and who profess to have the secret to learning this great game. So how does a discerning consumer understand what sets Techni Tennis apart? Well, to me, uh, what I would do is, and and this was the Gene Mayer approach to looking at it, was I didn't go, well, I was a top junior player and then a top collegiate player and then a top professional player. I know the game, and does John, does that sound good to me or not? Um, and I, I didn't even trust my own knowledge. I think that the ac- the really accurate way to go about doing something like this would be to go and e- extensively compare the videos uh, and the instruction with players and watching, you know, a- a comparing A, B with um, videos of the players, how they hit the ball, what they're doing, and see if that makes sense. To me, that's the litmus test. And a lot of people will say, because a lot of people say, well, this is how, I remember, you know, years ago watching and people were saying, this is how Bjorn Borick hits his forehand. And I would look at it and i go, hmm, not really. That's not, <laughs> that's not what's going on. But yeah. uh, so, so the the idea is, I, I think I think there's a lot of marketing in the tennis world. There are a lot of people with very good names in the tennis world, and and that sort of thing. And they may be very appealing, but there may be ten systems and uh, or even tips, and they may contradict each other. So I would yeah. go right to the videos and try to compare and say, okay. With this kind of movement, this kind of foot positioning, this kind of rotation, this lean on the outer leg, this leverage to create the load on the outer leg, um, then all of those things, I think you have a basis of comparison. And I think the game is becoming, it's been slow to come, but it's becoming more and more scientific. So I would use the benefit of technology. To, you know, Andy Murray now watches a ton of videos 25 years ago. No one poured over videos of their uh, of their matches and could do the kinds of things with slow motion, ultra technical uh, things to make changes, and it's a great way to learn. I just received a press release from USTA that they are teaming with Yvonne Lindell, Marty Fish, and Jill Krabus to coach with USTA Player Development. So, to me, you know this red lights start flashing. Um, it begs the question. These three were are were phenomenal players. Can they coach? What are their credentials in terms of player development? And is this something that's gonna benefit American tennis? Really? Well well I, I, mean, I think you're... I think that's always a good question because a a good player doesn't necessarily turn into a good coach and it often takes years of cutting your teeth as a coach i know for me i always joke with people that i'm not sure if my dad was preparing me more to be a professional tennis player or more to be a coach uh in my time with him and watching him coach people over all those all those 20 or so years till i was actually out on the tour so coaching is a very different world than playing my my guess, and I don't know, I know a little bit about, I heard from Marty Fish's dad, Tom Fish, about Marty's time. My guess is that these relationships will very often take the form of 
working with the current players who are going out on the tour, more as what I would call finishing coaches, not ones that are developing games and building uh, fundamentals and what I call the dirty work of coaching, those early years, but more the finishing coach, taking the best players and turning them into champions by molding the mind. And, and obviously, Lendl has been there and and been extraordinary and has certainly some results with, uh, with Murray. But normally, top players go more into the mode of trying to work with other top players and trying to get that little bit extra uh, in the mental arena and belief side versus doing what, let's say, historically someone like Robert Lansdorp has done or some mm-hmm. along that line, which is building fundamentals. Yeah, but Lisa, there, if I can step in there and... Sorry, John, let me let me just ask this. Um, there is room for improvement at the top level of the professional game. We see players tweaking strokes. Um, you know, my, my favorite player, Rafael Nadal, is constantly tweaking his strokes and his movement and his patterns of play. So there is still room for that type of work to be done at the top of the game as well, right? Absolutely. I mean, it it is a fine art to take a very good player and make them great. I mean, that's an important part uh, of the game. I'm not sure that those names that you've mentioned and their potential involvement, and I don't know specifically what they're undertaking. I believe that Marty is going to be spending time out in Carson uh, yeah. because he's based in, in California and working with the young, uh, better crop of players that is coming up now. There's a good group of juniors just out of the juniors uh, that that were excelling on the ITF level. I'm not sure there will be a lot of trickle-down effect from those people's involvements with the game. My guess is it will be more centered on pros, that are looking to really break into the game and have an impact versus pros that that have wider impact and actually build sort of the base coming up. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, John, I'm so sorry you, I interrupted you. No, what no, did that's you fine. Want to that's say? no problem. Yeah, I mean, what I think really when I made my original trip and I wrote the original, original book, 0 for 39, uh, I think that, what the USDA has done is a, is a great thing, and, and then like Gene just described it, that's the upper level. But I still believe that the original thought that I had, that the best coaches are out spread across the country, and that if with Techni Tennis, if we can get the right information to them, get them the right tools, like we've taken the four and sequence it in 33 sequence, if we get the information to them so we can raise the level of play where it starts with a five-year-old, with a six-year-old. So I believe that the pros out in the field that are grinding it out to every day, they're actually going to make the players. Eventually, when they get to the USDA and we release a better product at the top, you're going to see the results. But everything I've really done over the past you know, four or five years has been directed to help the pros because I believe the pros out in the field in Atlanta, wherever they meet, are, are going to make the players. And if they have the right system, they'll raise the level of play. The more people that have the right system will even raise the level of play more. So by the time they get to the USDA, then they can do some of the finishing work. You know? So that's just my belief. You know, So whatever the USDA did was important, but there's hundreds and hundreds of amazing, great coaches. There's not just one coach in this country that's good there's a lot of good coaches and we just have to get them on the right system so if a parent would you know is is looking to find a coach that is using the techni tennis methodology is there a way to find that out i mean other than obviously calling up individual coaches and asking but is there a resource for them or can they contact y'all and find out who's using your system well, there's an ever-growing number of coaches, and even on the site, there are a number of, of the 
uh, the ones who have gone through the program, actually the exam and and studied and done all of that. So that that's an ever increasing number. That can certainly be done through Techni Tennis, the the uh, dot com, the site, or by contacting Techni Tennis directly. Great. So so y'all will. I mean, you're happy to act as a resource for parents looking for a coach. Well, absolutely. I mean, so much of what's what's going on here is to you know expand the the number of of places where people are getting the quality instruction. And we're talking about whether it's children, whether it's adults looking to improve their game because they've been struggling uh, for a a an enormously long uh, period of time. Because tennis can get to be very stress uh, stressful and frustrating when. There, it takes very long to get these things down. You seem to be hitting your head against the wall. <laughs> so a, a, a lot of what's being done here is to expedite the process for coaches and for students and more and more people that John has been particularly spending time with. Very few of the coaches, once they've seen the system operate and they've seen students that they have come on or, or beginners exposed to it, see the benefits, and see it quickly. So uh, part part of that is really we see ourselves not so much as coming in and saying, no one has known what's going on in the game before. We invented it. Here it is. But much more being a resource to help young players, their parents, coaches, and the whole developmental process. Because John and I for a long time have really felt that, that the, the, the quality of 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 learning across the United States really is improved not because you produce more or less champions. You know, we're pretty pretty meager at the top of the men's game now and and in let's say the time of um, of uh of, you know, Sampras and Agassi it was strong and Connors McEnroe and and I were together when I was number 4, I was the number 3 American. Uh, so it was a, it was a, an American dominated game, but it is the quality of the coaching that determines the quality of of tennis in America because that's where people learn. And if we we can move that uh, along in terms of both quality and simplicity, that's that is a very important task. It's not about you know having one player break through. That would be great because young kids are drawn and they love saying, you know, Roddick was number one in the world, so I want to play tennis or whoever it is, and it's great to have national heroes. Uh, the, the key, though, is is boosting what goes on in the trenches day-to-day, coaches one-on-one on the court with eight-year-old kids and with interested parents trying to help who are driving and 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 saving and going to tournaments on the weekends and all of that effort we would like that effort really to pay off in quality and not turn into a frustrating experience that ultimately leads to dissatisfaction or even starting to play another sport because it's just somehow simpler Right. Well, let me ask you this because Techni Tennis is so focused on fundamentals. How does the red, orange, green program fit into what you guys are doing? I uh, yeah, Lisa, I wrote an entire program that fits uh, with what I call Techni Terminator. So I had to come up with a name. You know, everything's Techni Tennis. There's a lot of T's in what I do, I guess. Uh, but uh, <laughs> of how do you teach a three year old? How do you teach a four-year-old? And then you can fit them into the USDA courts and that there's progress them. So, but the key, again, is with the softball. You know, I always tell people, if you if you can hit a softball and it travels the same as a hardball, then you are kind of modernized. But if you're in linear power, that softball is really pretty useless to you. It's just basically like hitting a muffin. If you know the modern-day techniques of what Nadal or Federer them used, you can take that softball and do all kinds of things with it. So at the end of the day, it still comes down to your ability to rotate that ball and develop racket at speed. And really, kids can develop that. At I was doing some test runs with three or four year old kids in South Beach, and, and it's amazing what kids can actually do. Yeah. Well, you know. So. So, so you do utilize think, the the red, orange, green. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely you can use them, but there's a progression to them. I mean, I think that really if you can rotate a ball really good and and you're strong enough, then you should also go ahead and practice with a regular ball. I just think there needs to be a progression. You go from the one ball to the other, but when you reach a certain level, you really just need to be hitting with a regular ball. But there's always use for those softballs. They're very important in terms of slowing it down, making it easier, making it more fun for the kids, but I'm not so sure that it's making people in the 12s or the younger divisions happier playing with that ball, you know? That's one of the concerns that I've had. I I believe tennis is really a customized game. One of the benefits of learning from a local coach for, for parents who are trying to find the right coach and for children who really want to learn is someone who will take the individual time realizing what your aptitudes are, and then build even a playing style around that. Uh, One of my concerns is once you standardize things, let's say for me, when I was five years old, I was hitting a regular ball fine, and I started very young, and I had lots of hours with a dad who was a coach. So I, I think that the idea of mandatory ball use up to a certain age, and all the tournaments are, are this. I, I'm not sure that that really benefits players. I think it's a very valuable tool, but as part of a custom program. And I, I think what, what John, you know, if you look at the way the top players train, Nadal and Federer and Murray, very different. There are common <laughs> elements, and I think what, what Techni Tennis does because when you look at Federer and you look at Nadal, it's hard to imagine they're almost playing the same game in some ways. Their games look so different, their approach to playing, their mentality. But they share common elements which make them both extraordinary movers and hitters of the ball. And those are the things that are essential for everyone to get down early. And the balls can be an effective means of of speeding up that process, but it really does need to be done, as John said, uh, judiciously and according to where where the the player really is. As opposed to age based, is what you're saying. You're, yeah, you're looking as opposed more to, at okay, it. until this time, that's it, and at this time, uh, because there can be a huge swing. You know, I, if someone when I started at two, I was set by six. If someone starts at eight, it, the same thing may happen at twelve. Mm-hmm. So I think tennis right. is such a radically different game and development, size, strength, ability to swing a racket, swing it fast, all of those things. And so a coach in their training is probably best able to discern, along with input from the parent, um, how the, 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 the child is coming along physiologically. And so those, all of those fit into the equation. Got it, got it, and 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 so now again, I'm going to go back to this whole um, question of the coaches' college that USTA is starting. Have you guys talked to them about incorporating techni tennis into the curriculum, and if so, how's that going? Well, well, I think that you know with techni tennis. Uh, it's taking some time to develop. I think we're in a unique position now where we have, you know, a, billi- a million dollars worth of video production. We're going to continue to shoot uh, more information. We have players like Gene who stepped up and liked the system so much that he's working within the system. You have Martin Dumb. You have, you know, another uh, Alice Ferreira. You have so many other ATP Tour pros that are using the system that's getting us some credibility. But, you know, I... I I'm not so sure that we're always just going to be an independent system that's a niche in the market. You know, I feel like the USDA have their role, and they're very important. They certainly do, do great things. I feel like some of the other teaching organizations do great things. We're more the mechanism of here are the 33 keys to the four ends. This is how you learn it. Our job is to train the pros, you know, and, and, and work with uh, people uh, that can get better at all levels, whether it's the technique terminators, whether it's the beginners, or if you want to play like the pros and be an actual pro. You know, so I think that's where our role is going to come in as, as a separate entity. Yeah? 
And, and, and as far as the USTA or any of the other organizations, we are certainly open. I, from, from what I've seen, and, and we have been around the game for a long time and also are familiar with other products, we are not uh, familiar with any system, whether it is the U- USTA as a body or any of the other groups that have a comprehensive system where there actually is a benchmark for um, for comparison of of the elements that need to be taught, the essentials, this kind of thing. So we are we are of the mind where we are more than willing to help uh, any uh, coaching groups uh, or organizations in that regard and have them come on board because. I, I've always been concerned a bit that there's a bit of paranoia in the tennis world, that people stay very isolated and want to control their students and and the parents that were. And I, I've always been uh, of the mind that it's very helpful to have this be a team effort and work and share knowledge, and that really helps to build players, whether it's an individual player or a nation's quality of the players they produce. So we are more than willing to work with any any of the people in that regard and have them benefit from the extraordinary amount of time and effort and money that has been poured to actually uh, codify this system. Well, that's good to hear. And I, I hope Scott Schultz reaches out to you guys. Um, is there a mentoring aspect to the coaching training? Because that's kind of a message that's come up repeatedly of late uh, from various coaches that I've had on this show, that having that mentoring aspect is really crucial to continuing to develop as a coach and a teacher. Yeah, I can probably answer that. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll keep joking, technique, you know, terminus technique toughness um we're busy uh producing an entire sequence of mental lessons uh, and they'll be presented in a form where you know you can if you play a point and this happens what are some of the sequences just trying to help players because the, the game is much more difficult today in the sense that it's fast it's competitive uh so many factors out there. So the mental side, I think, is even a little bit more difficult today than it was in the past. So we are uh, producing that. That'll be one of the things we probably release here within the next three or four months, which is the mental side of Technic Tennis. So if you can look at Technic Tennis as maybe a form of different libraries, the forehand library, the backhand library, the volley library, the mental toughness library, it's just been very tedious uh, you know, to produce everything in, in, in movie quality and production shooting like you know because my company here actually makes movies for netflix you know so we have one of the five best studios in the world so i had to learn a lot about this but that there's definitely a mental side that we're working on because that's a big deal and i think gene i think one of the things that made gene such a great player is 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 his mental side gene if you want to say something about that because i think that was one of your strengths you know and of course the point construction Right, absolutely. I think that it's it's gigantically important. Uh, almost every player that I know of was in a in a relationship with a coach, with a close relationship, not just one of many people. Let's say in an academy who's running and hitting balls, but there is actually individual development, not just tennis development, because part of it's very uh, it's very um, revealing when you get on center court at Wimbledon, not just how you play tennis, but who you are as a person. And that will be exposed. And if you are not developing under the mentorship of someone who you respect and someone who has the kind of background and understanding to move you along, uh, it's it's very hard to develop in the game. So it, 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 you just can't learn tennis in a vacuum. So the relationship part of coach to student cannot be stressed enough. And and one of my concerns often is players will develop with a certain coach, 
and then for one reason or another, all of a sudden that's completely broken off, and they're just expected to start with another coach who might know a little bit more about some things. But, I mean, I, I've worked a number of times with uh, with coaches and their students, and, say, and, and to say, I can bring some things to the table um, because of my playing background, but... Your coach day to day is going to know your emotional makeup, your the way that you learn. There's so many keys that someone who is in the trenches has that can't be uh, can't be superseded by a hired gun from the outside who's maybe a very good tennis player. There, there's a huge part of the personal connection and mentorship that is really essential to, I believe, to learning anything and particularly a difficult game like tennis what about the mentorship between coaches for example you know a more experienced coach taking on a newer coach or one who's just getting into coaching not necessarily younger but maybe less experienced and helping him or her along through the process will techni tennis you know, facilitate those types of relationships through the coach's training? We would certainly hope to. Um, we, at this point, a number of uh, the demonstrations that John has done particularly are uh, geared towards coach gatherings, high school coach gatherings, or coaches within a particular area. And uh, I, I believe that it is I mean, it's a wonderful time of getting together. The tennis community is small, so I think the pros tend to enjoy that. But it's a terrific learning time, and one of the things that that I have really felt um, is lacking in the game over the years is I believe if we would have started 20 years ago with a number of pros even who are no longer around right now, where people just, you know, would would for a week at a at a hub watch this pro teaching, and like I know someone like my dad. My dad spawned a huge number of coaches through his tennis camp, and he loved to train them, work with them, talk with them, spend time with them, and he became almost a second dad to some of them, and then they went off and became head pros and and pros all over the place wherever they landed. So I, I think for a number of pros, even if it was just gathering around and watching some of the really seasoned, successful pros, that's a way of multiplying knowledge and building relationship among the pros, and everyone benefits. And I think for someone who's been in the game, I love talking to pros who you know will often call from a partic- particular area and they'll say, you know, I've got this going on. I can't figure it out. You know, can you give me some hints? I, I think that's a great way of sharing. So we would love to be part of gatherings that uh, that bring pros together, and that there's really a sharing of knowledge. And, and we're trying to create almost a team, a techni tennis team concept, not individual coach building their little you know little mini empire over here and you know, controlling those students, but really a sharing opportunity uh, where there might even be opportunities for gathering of pros with their students and some competition among those students even at that time. So all of that, I, I believe, only enhances the learning experience for everyone. And coaches, uh, it, it, it's a demanding game, and the game has changed a lot since even the time when I played, let alone – you know, so if you're not following the game and talking to people and sharing ideas, um, it's it's too complicated to ever fully understand. You're always learning, and and that kind of sharing, I, I believe, makes coaching fun and interesting, and also builds very close relationships. Yeah, Gene, and if I may follow up there, one of the things that we're hoping with Techni Tennis. So as I work with. Uh, three different academies, and I went to certify the pros. So we're not saying Techni Tennis is the law and the only system, but now we can go in within an academy and there's seven different pros. And one of the things that seven pros, there was three Americans, four different countries. There are very different people there with different ideas, but we can create a base system of where they can all work from and then they can take their talent and run. But now if they're working with different, so when a player goes from one coach to another, even within a system, many times 
these major issues because the director is so far advanced. The guy at the bottom doesn't give them what they need. So now you have more of a base system that can manage the technique, and everybody's more on the same path. And from there, players can use their talent. So I think that that's where you know, the, and, and people uh, have been very interested in that. As I certified some of the these academies the last couple of months. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I I mean, to me, you can really tell the difference in a coach that has left themselves open to work with mentors and learn from more experienced coaches. It, it's just there's a vast difference in the way they approach the game, the way they approach the individual that they're teaching. And, um, you know, so I – I think that's a, a huge um, piece of the puzzle that has been missing, and it kind of goes back to what you said, Gene, about all the marketing that's involved in our game. And you know, it's it's a buyer beware situation out there, and and the parents really have to uh, do their homework, do their due diligence before they invest time and money with a coach. Yes, I think that's right, and I and I think one of the one of the questions for parents who might be listening that I would ask right away is what would you, what would the coach expect to learn from the student? Uh, because hmm. what I've learned over over time is often within fifteen minutes of seeing someone hit balls, hit their strokes, I can see what some of the problems are and where they might need to go. So I, I've been around the game long enough that that is not necessarily terribly difficult. How this student moves from where they are to where they need to be is really an art form. How do you how do you help someone to do something that they alone can do, but to grasp concepts, to understand, to internalize, to own these strokes? to start to understand how to play the game and put all these aspects together. There are so many moving pieces, and part of what needs to be done is to really understand who is the student, what, you know, how do they learn, how do they think, what do they relate to, what's their attention span, what, what, what motivates them, what do they like. You know, one of the things that I always say to say to students that's hugely important is if if you would have made McEnroe play like Borg and play for five hours from the backcourt and loop topspin balls, McEnroe would have retired at seven years old. And if you would have <laughs> taken McEnroe and, and and you would have taken Bjorn and now made him come to net and serve in volley and sort of you know, chip and charge, he would have been completely a fish out of water. So what a fine coach does, and, and Stan Smith pointed this out to me a few years ago when I went to do an exhibition with him in, in Sea Pines, and he said, I was always amazed by your dad because he had two sons. They grew up in the same house, same food, same water. One played with two hands off both sides, which was me, and never hit two balls the same. Variety galore, point development, all sorts of variety. And then he developed another son who started with two hands, straight ahead flat, serve and volley, largely very consistent, but one shot from each position, but very well learned. And one got to be four in the world, one got to be seven in the world. And he was wise enough to learn from you what, how you would really excel but wise enough to also know the fundamentals that were essential and which were absolutely essential to say this needs to be there and where latitude can be given to the student. So every good coach is a learner from their student, particularly early on, gathering this information and trying to understand sort of how to unlock that key of not giving. It's easy to give good information, but it can just be, you know, fall on deaf ears. The right. idea of information that's really helpful and at different ages and different emotional uh, stages of their lives. And, and I'll give you an example. There was a young girl whose, whose dad died at quite a young age, and a friend of mine was trying to help her. And so she was playing a local tournament. And so 
the first thing I did was I met her before the match for a minute, and I watched her play the turn, play the match. And she came off, and so, so I, I didn't know whether we would discuss it. Some people are funny. She won seven five in the third, a very tight match in the semifinals. So I was taking my cue from her, and so I said, "What did you think?" And, and she turned to me. She said, "Do you think the other girl liked me <laughs> after watching the match?" Now, from a male perspective, I don't think John and I have ever thought about that on the court as we're playing a match. <laughs> she was thinking about that. that. That social connection to the other person. So I could have said, that's absurd. You know, it, on, but, but the idea that she's emotionally engaged and socially connected to that person, I have to know that. That's how she sees the world. Yeah, and I was with a, a girl, Jean, at a pro tournament about three, four weeks ago, and I realized she was worried about the competition, you know. And I'm like, don't worry about them. They'll take care of their side, and we're on this side, you know. Yes. And, so, and, but, but and that, I, saw, that's, I said, well, that, girls think differently, you know. Yes, developing that kind of relationship with that young lady and helping her through a difficult time period, I had to learn that, not say, well, in an ideal sense, I'd rather have you worried about what's going on on your side of the court and retaining focus. But that's part of who that young lady was. Right. Interesting. So to me, that well, that's a huge part of, of this whole learning process. The reason that John and I are still in the game is not because we think we know it all. It's because there's so much more that we'd like to learn. And, and getting together with pros and former players and is, is a learning experience. And that's what makes it great. You, you, never, you never have this game down. Absolutely. I learn every time I step on the court, Jim. Absolutely. And that's as it should be, as it should be. Guys, we are out of time. I I'm, I'm, would love to keep going with you, and, and I'm hoping that you'll agree to come do the show again in the future. And as Techni Tennis continues to develop, um, that you'll come back and share those developments with Parenting Aces. For those who want to get in touch with you guys, they can go to technitennis.com, and that's T E C H N E T E N N I S dot com. And your contact information is on the website, I think. Yeah, the, um, uh, yes. Lisa, the app is live on the App Store, so they can download that from the App Store. Yeah? Great. Is there a charge for the app, John? They have uh, some, uh, yeah, the app is, uh, you know, it's $25 a month. It's a one year subscription. Uh, it does have a okay. million dollars worth of videos on it, but. They can download the app and look at the information of all the uh, – there's three promo videos on there, and they can look at all the different uh, lesson plans and stuff and, and evaluate it. So they can go on and actually look at it for free to evaluate it again. Fantastic. So to my listeners, I hope you will take advantage of this great information that John and Jean have shared with us today. Gentlemen, thank you so much, and continued success with Techni Tennis. I look forward to hearing the next great things that are coming out of out of your organization and your work. Well, thank you thank for you, having Lisa. us. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Great. And keep, up, my the, listeners, keep up the good work. The parents are important, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to my they listeners out job. there. I hope you've enjoyed the show today and uh, have a great week on the courts. And I'll see you next week on Parenting Aces. <laughs>